Tonight, the alarming truth about your smoke detector and why your safety could be at risk. On your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan here tonight. Ron, there are serious questions about the type of smoke detector that you buy. Yeah, that's exactly right. There are two types of smoke detectors. But we found that American consumers have been left in the dark for decades. Many could have been saved with the Captain Kelly smoke detector. Smoke alarms hit the market in the early 70s. But we found serious questions about one type, now found in 90% of homes, were first raised decades ago. Dean Dennis lost his daughter and her four friends in this 2003 house fire near Ohio State. What was in that house? There were nothing but ionization smoke alarms in that house. Ionization alarms, those found in 90% of homes, react more slowly to smoke. Discovery first published 40 years ago in this 1974 government comparison of both types of technology. 20 years ago, university researchers concluded photoelectric were the most reliable. And so have others, including firefighters, fire chiefs, and home inspectors. And just 10 years ago, another round of government tests found something even more concerning. Ionization alarms may not always alarm, even when a room is filled with smoke. The third of all the deaths in the United States could be prevented by switching to photoelectric. In Boston, one of the nation's largest fire departments acted quickly. In the city of Boston, uh, what is required in homes? In the city of Boston, you must use either photoelectric smoke detectors or dual smoke detectors. You are not allowed to use ionization as standalone devices. The National Fire Protection Association is recognized as the world's leading advocate of fire prevention. NFPA is committed to consumer safety. Absolutely. And so you would support consumer education. Absolutely. But groups like NFPA and Underwriters Laboratories, those most involved with standards and testing, insist both are equal. But the industry is well aware of all of these limitations on both types of technology, and that's not shared with consumers. Why? The main point, Ron, is that both technologies have to pass the same test. And those same groups who have the greatest influence over consumer decisions are at odds with firefighters who know fires best. What we do know is that a significant amount of fires start as flaming, which one technology is better at, and a significant amount of fires start as smoldering, which a different technology is better at. The problem we have is that you can't always tell what kind of fire you're going to have. Most consumers are not aware that that smoke detector may not go off even though there's so much smoke you and I wouldn't be able to see each other. Shouldn't consumers know the same information that industry insiders know? I, I can only comment on what our standards require. But we found U.S. standards aren't safe enough for others. David Isaacs helped write Australian smoke alarm standards. And we determined that the only detectors that would give a measured um, high probability of of warning in time for those egress paths to remain safe with photoelectrics. And U.S. consumers, says Isaacs, are being left in the dark. Is that costing lives? Absolutely it is. Absolutely. Unequivocally. 911, where's the emergency? Fire in trailer park. Rock 20 meters on fire. Here in Ohio, it may already have. A father and six children died here in Tiffin. Rescuers could hear the alarm. But photos we obtained confirmed the family depended on this ionization alarm, the very type that often responds more slowly to smoke. All seven died from smoke inhalation. You can check out our NewsNet 5 app to learn a lot more about choosing smoke alarms and how they work. But the bottom line is that a growing number of firefighters are absolutely convinced that these ionization alarms will not go off in time, and many of them are simply not even using them. Yeah, what an eye-opener. Yes. Yeah. Ron, thank you. Ron. Great work. Report.